Praise the maker of the heavens and the earth and the seas and everything that in them is Lord unto you are we gathered. Revisit Christ to us, may our hearts indict the good matter. And may we live this class better than the way we came. Amen. And Lord, whatever burden your children came with, may they never go home with it. Amen. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Champion, shout fire! Shout to Ruru! Shad Muzuzu, Shad Mafura, Shad Onsio, and they all mean anointing in different languages. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the presence of the Holy Spirit for the privilege to be here. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And also want to thank our most holy father, Papa Joshua Igila. Say we we'll love you, our Papa. We love you, our Papa. Amen and amen. amen. And I hope you were blessed by our Papa's service this morning. Amen. amen. Yes, and he prayed against the spirit of death. Amen. Amen. Well, maybe you didn't watch it, but I did. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's stand to our feet. Let's walk up to 15 persons and say, It's so nice to see you in church. It's Amen. It's so nice to see you in church. Mind. If you believe it, help me sing. Come on, say, I can do. Of 
Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes, well, maybe you don't, but I do. <laughs> okay, what does God want from me? That's what we want to talk about. What does God want from you? What does God want? Because many have lived and died without ever knowing what God wants from them. What does God want from you? Why is he disrupting your plans? Because you have plans, truthfully, for your life, what you want to do. And you heard a sermon from a minister that really got to you and you're like, no, why am I hearing this now? 
God should have waited a bit for me to just, you know, have my dreams met. <laughs> then I cannot listen to him maybe around 60 or maybe an, around 75. What does God really want from you? Yes, There's only one thing God really wants. Only one thing from all of us. Your attention. That's all. Going to church, serving God, all that we do. It's just only one thing. See? Because he's someone previously that only spirits listen to. So when he made man, he wants man to listen to him. Yes, sir. Let's see what he said to Adam when Adam did not listen to him. Yes, sir. Because he asked Adam in Genesis chapter 3, you can go there, did you do what I told you not to do? Adam said, the woman you gave me made me eat and all of that. Now let's see what the Lord said in verse 17. You get to see. Because today we talk about man fell in the garden, man sin against God. What is man's sin? His sin was not that he ate. Look at verse 17. What did he say? And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast listened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast you see that? You listen to your wife instead of me. Mm, yes, see? <laughs> is it wrong to listen to your wife? No. But if God tells you something, whatever your wife says or whatever your husband says does not matter anymore. Because when God reacts, even the person you listen to as a husband or a wife will not be able to stand to defend you. The wife you listen to could not even defend you. You know, see, I say this respectfully. In America, you know, as a minister in America, it's a very, very tricky. You know, some people think that um, pastoring a church in America. It's very easy. It's different from pastoring a church in Africa. Yes, sir. Truthfully. Because I, I, I pastored boats. <laughs> it's easy to grow in Africa. It's easy to grow a church. I mean, I grew churches, handed over. I was transferred to another place. Grew, handed over. Transfer. Because everyone is seeking for God because of poverty. So, yes, <laughs> evangelism is very easy. Do you understand? But you come into an environment of convenience yeah. where what you pray to God for in Africa, the government can give it to you. Yeah. All you just need to do is to just fill a piece of yeah. paper and sign up. So you find out that convenience then, it, it makes it difficult for you to come to church. And you have access to two jobs. In Nigeria, you don't do two jobs. Yeah. One job alone will exhaust you. Yeah, yeah they don't even pay well. But in America, yeah, you can do two or three jobs. Yes, sir. That was even surprising to hear. Do you understand? So, <laughs> and when we went to college in Nigeria, the norm, the norm for students in Nigeria is that you are supposed to finish school before you start working. It's wrong. Here, you can still go to school and work. Yes, so, you know, you can start making your own money even at 16. Yes. Yes, in Nigeria, you, you will be fully grown. The first salary you earn is from the government through what they call NYSC. <laughs> See? But the reason why I say that is because I have seen families yes, sir. over the years. Yes, sir. You see a husband who prevents the wife from going to church. In fact, many fought me in the past. They, I mean, you, you know, uh, they fought me in the past. In fact, some of them said, you are taking our wives away. And they had a meeting and some of them sent a delegation to come and see me. It's true, in this New Jersey. <laughs> and I said, I said, no, I only teach them the word of God. But they like what I hear. He said, well, and this one thing, Brother Elsie said, Brother Elsie said. So I started telling the women, please, stop mentioning Brother Elsie. <laughs> Over oh, that thing caused problem. And I did know good women, excellent women. And some of them will say, Brother Ozzy, for peace to reign. Don't worry, I will, I will not come. But maybe I can be sending you something. I say, No, no, don't send, don't worry. 
Will I miss God? I said, no, you can't miss God. Just because you don't come here doesn't mean you miss God. But at the end of the day, the family still did not get better. The family did not get better. And at the end of the day, the very thing the man was trying to protect, he lost it. Because for some now, about three families that I know, they are not divorced. And the children scattered. <laughs> in fact, some are still trying to find out what to do. You know, when in a community they've gone to three colleges already, every school knows them. Uh -uh. What are you still doing here? So they want to travel to another state to go and start afresh. I saw that over and over again. So it's kind of tricky because you don't want to offend the man. But he's a fool. Yes, sir. It's the truth. I mean, you know the guy who used to bring a gun to church? He will sit next. You know the, you know the person. He will bring a gun to church, sit next to his wife. He will sometimes he will use his wife's phone to call me. I say, oh, God, what are you doing? You think your wife is somebody I'll be interested in? If I am interested in her, you will not even know. I will take her away from you. <laughs> he got angry. <laughs> He got angry. He later brought me money. He said, please, I just want to give you money so that you leave my wife alone. I said, I did not take your wife. <laughs> but I can understand. You see, the women are actually not their problem. It's their own insecurities. Yes. Yes. Their own insecurities. But the question is, you the woman, why, why would you give in to another man's insecurity? See what God said. He said, because you listened to your wife. The very same woman God gave him. God gave him the woman. But God said, just because I gave you somebody doesn't mean the person should be above me yeah. when I talk to you. See? Oh, God. Man's sin was that he did not listen to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's man's sin. That he did not listen to God. See, even to the men, naturally, Women are responsive naturally to spiritual things. Check. The people who do voodoo more are women. The men who do the voodoo for them are men. But the women who patronize voodoo the most are women. The women who go to church the most, are, no, sorry, the people who go to church the most are women. Yes, sir. But male ministers minister to them the most. Is that way? It is just natural. Because it has always been a woman's desire to seek wisdom. If you go to this chapter 3 and read verses 6, the Bible says, After this happened, spoke, the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Desire to make one wise. It is natural. And how come many men have not read that to know it is natural for a woman to seek wisdom? So I say, I, I never knew her eye will open. You know, <laughs> there was one who said that to me. You are opening the eye. Now she's bothered to challenge me. She never used to look at my face again. I said, Mr. Man, so in America, this is what you expected your wife to be. To be afraid of you, not to look at you. He said, now nah, nah, you are making her disrespectful. I said, Mr. Man, I'm ashamed that you said that. That your wife is not disrespectful because she told you what you are doing is wrong. In fact, there was one, I, I, who was there? We were still discussing it recently in the office. There was one who... <laughs> no, let me not see that one. No, 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 that one is not necessary. It's just funny. It's just funny. It's just funny. No, don't worry about that. It's not necessary. But the focus here is not to challenge marriages. I hope you know I'm not against. You know, whatever... Your agreement is with your partner. It's you. But you think about it. Where was Eve when God began to curse man's productivity? That's the point. You see, God, you are fighting this, your wife or your child, from coming to church. The very thing that is giving you supply at home is what God will destroy. The ground, his source, his job. Go and see them today. Some of those, the foolish men, 
they are so redundant. It is the wives that are still working, taking care of the families. It's been years I've been seeing it. Notice, God said, the ground that was producing for you is what I will cost. You see that job that you think you have, that is making you square your shoulders, God said, no problem. You will start having problems. And the thing is that you will never trace it to the fact that it was because you stopped your children or your wife, your household from serving God. And the way God will do it, he will do it in such a way, by the time you not need his help, he will not tell you, look, I don't have time for you. God has always wanted from man was attention. Somebody say, God wants us to serve him. No. Go to Proverbs. Go to, go to Proverbs. Man's sin was that he did not pay attention. Not what he ate. Proverbs chapter 1. Look at the last verse of Proverbs chapter 1. What does God want from me? And guess what? Do you know what you also want from God? You see? If I ask you now, what do you want from God? I want God to bless me. That's not what you want, really. I'll tell you. You didn't even know. That's why God has not answered your prayers. Do you know what you really want from God? His attention. You want his attention. He now wants yours. You expect him to give you attention when you have never given him any. Whenever there's a problem, you pray. Why are you praying? Please answer now. What are you praying? See, I know you're upset now. Because I talked about families. See, I have seen it over and over again. You know, there are some families today, sometimes even when I, I, I talk with them privately, I, I feel for them, really. And, and I'm not, I, I don't feel for them for, for the choices they made in marrying the men. No, it's just that. How can a man be that ignorant? So, and guess what? 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 <laughs> you know, another foolish thing. Again, it's foolish. It's just that I've not said things about. I've not said anything about it for years. It's just foolish. You know, when I say a family that prays together, stick together. So, since we are married, we must all go to the same church. Wow. It's not true. You need to understand, just because you are married to someone doesn't mean you marry the spirit. The Bible says everyone would individually stand before the Lord, individually. So if you say you are going to a place where your soul is not nourished, just because you want to please another ignorant person, or because of their insecurity, you know, there are some people who go to certain churches because their insecurity finds a safe haven yeah. in those places. Yes, there was, when we first started talk, talking about students going to Ivy Leagues, many years ago, you know now, many parents took, they took their children. We used to have a lot of members. They took their children out of the church. Why are you telling them to go to Ivy Leagues? Okay, they are building mansions in the villages, sending their children to community colleges. Houses that witches and wizards will fight you over. And your child will not be interested to inherit. And that money, you could have used it to send your child to Harvard, to, to the Ivy Leagues. You went to use it to build a mansion that they will not come and live in. And I said, man, Mr. Man, can you even reason? He said, I understand you, but it's our tradition. I, when we go home, I, I will not be able to sit in, in the midst of my colleagues. Is, is that what you are concerned about? Investing in your own child, not my own biological child. Your own child. I said, send the child to an Ivy League. Billion children. Some of them will have to pay their school fees. That's why the likes of them, Pastor Christian and the others, came to live with us. See but since she was going to drop out from school, she was going to drop out. And I said, no. And we paid her school fees till she finished. And her family doesn't even know that. Yeah. She actually dropped out. And I said, go back to school. 
and we paid her. And the last school fee she paid, the school was not owing now. I said, make it so. Yeah. What does God want from me? What does God want from me? Your attention. What do you think you came to church to come and do? Give to give attention. Yes. That's all God wants from you. Yes. And now you deny someone from going to a place where they can hear God talk to them. Where they can give God their attention and you have a problem with it. You want to marry timid people. You want to make the people around you timid and stupid. You know, there was a lady who came to meet me in the office the first time and said, this is the first time I'm seeing young ladies as pastors. Mm. He said, I've never been to a church where young ladies are pastors. So. He said, what did you do to them? I said, I didn't do anything. They gave attention. They learned the way I do it. He said, I was listening to them. And they're introducing themselves as pastors. And they were even asking some of them. I, I learned you are a pastor. How did you become a pastor at your age? See? Why? Because they discovered some other young ladies, their mates, have gone ahead of them. Gone ahead of them. Pastor Brittany here that is here. Right? Pastor Brittany here. Her, he, her father summoned me to his house. Abby? Brother Michael? true. Brother Wilson? Did your father not call me to his house? I went to see him with Pastor Chris. So I can't understand. All my children in church. <laughs> All of them. Nobody's at home. I wake up, nobody's at home. <laughs> I just said, they love God. Amen. And you should be glad Amen. that you have excellent children who are not doing Amen. drugs on the streets. Amen. They are in church. They love God. He said, please, did you go to school? I said, I, said, I went to school. He asked me if I went to school. I learned recently, Pastor Brittany, while she was preaching, her mother was now watching her. She stumbled on Zoom and was watching her. Uh -uh. And then somehow was not too pleased with one remark she said. And then held it till she got home and said, I listened to you today. Why would you say <laughs> such a thing? She now said to the mother, but it's true. <laughs> so she came back and told me, I said, don't worry, your mother is proud of you, believe me. She's happy to see that her young daughter. <laughs> Wait, by the way, how old are you, Pastor Vinny? 23. A 23 year old lady is talking to even an 80 year old woman for hours talking. Is that not honorable? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. How old are you? 23. 23. And she's an assistant pastor. See? Take your seat. Yeah. I said, don't worry, she's proud of you. She's proud of you. She's just surprised she did not invest in you to be who you are. And I can understand. But they cost it. Now, I'm not blaming their parents. <laughs> you, you too. All God needs is your attention. Look at the last verse of Proverbs chapter 1. See what is this. But whosoever hackings. Hacking means what? To listen. So use that word, listen. Now let's read it together. I want to go. But whosoever listens unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. So the husband that is telling you, don't go to church, can you guarantee our safety? Can you keep us from evil? Because evil will come. Yes, sir. So that person, even that, even if your father says, every time church, 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 stay, say, Daddy, can you keep us from evil? In fact, be bold to say to your parents, I'm the reason why evil has not hit this family. <laughs> you don't go to church. God cannot remember the last time he saw you to talk to you. Then you want to pray to him to help you in trouble. You see, you know, we like to quote scriptures. Call me in the day of trouble and I will answer you. Yes, you don't be, don't be a dummy. And I know you are not. And I know you, truly I know you are not a dummy. Because you know he was not talking to you. It was David he was talking to. Yes, sir. David who sought the Lord all the time. Was the one God now assured. Call me in the day of trouble. You, you don't even call. Yeah. They don't see you. You now want to call. Father, your word says I should call you in the day of trouble. Yeah. When last did God see you? When last did God see you? 
The person he was talking to read it in context was David. David would say, early will I seek you. Mm. Some of us don't sleep just to hear God talk. Yeah. Okay, fine. I told you my experience recently, right? About my experience with debt, right? But how did I know? He told me. He told me. When he came in, he said, he said it's time to go. I said, really? He said, I said, well, how about these people? There's this thing. He said, see, it's all about value. Do these people really value you? I need you more. <laughs> he said, anyway, prepare yourself. I said, ah. And then I told you my experience. The moment he walked in, my breath started going away. Gradually. But I was still coming to half service, preach, pray for people. But my breath was going away. It was going away. And I just traveled recently. It was la As I was coming back, he now said, okay, I've given you more life. Amen. He said, okay, Amen. Like this. But you see, how some people don't even know when it is time for them to go. Yes. Why? Because they never paid attention. But I was listening when he came to talk to me. <laughs> he says, if you listen to me, you will dwell safely. Yes. When last did you hear him? Wow. All God ever needs from you is your attention. And it's not hard. That's why he gave you a mind. He gave you a mind. When last? He told you, as you are traveling, don't take the usual route. You say it's a shortcut. Mm. It's a shortcut. I'll just get home in five minutes. And then you now got there. There was a heavy construction. They now told you, detour, detour, detour. And then you spend over 30 minutes on the road because so many cars were also oh. doing detour. Mm. And you ended up on the same route he told you to take at the beginning. You didn't even pay attention. So you wasted your time. I hope you know. That five minutes you just wasted. That 20 minutes is actually part of the time of your life. I hope you know that. You didn't just waste 10 minutes. Oh, I just wasted my time. No, it, actually that time you wasted is part of your lifespan. Yes, sir, I hope you know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe it didn't occur to you. That time you wasted. That time you, you drove to go and see someone who was not at home. You kept knocking, knocking, knocking. That 20 minutes you drove. To 20 minutes, fro. You know what I mean? <laughs> the others are, and then five minutes knocking. Is how many minutes now? 45 minutes. That 45 minutes has just been taken away from your life. See that? Look at. He says, if you listen to me, who is telling you not to go to church? Can the person guarantee you this? No. Safety. No, sir. And the person is telling you, say, for peace to reign, and peace is still not reigning. No. You are fighting every day. The children are not listening. And then now you are not having problems in, in your job. The very thing that is bringing you supply is what God will attack. The ground that was producing for Adam was what God cost. He said, now you will sweat. The thing that used to come easy for you will not come easy that way again. <laughs> See that? The husband who never knew how you were born, who never knew how you were raised, just found you as a beautiful lady to marry you, is not trying to determine your destiny with God by which church you go to. And you, you are lying. Say so. I don't want any problem. What are you afraid of? The one you should be afraid of is the one who can snatch your breath away. He will not even tell you. <laughs> now nah, I'm not angry with you. I hope you know I'm not angry with you. <laughs> so say, Rosie, you are trying to embarrass me. I'm not embarrassing. I'm just trying to say, think about it. How long will you will you live in that fear? In case you don't know, it's a fear. And the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. Yes, and you have, you have allowed someone that was supposed to be your partner yes, to put fear in you. Yes, Is that person really a partner? No. Sir. You want to pray, you go into hiding, not to offend him. <laughs> and that's a partner. See what he did to you. And for years you are like that. That's not right. 
It means that the fire of God in you is going down. It's time to rekindle it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he's it's going to leave you. So what? So what? It's not as if you were sleeping with someone. You were serving God. And let's see how he would tell the story to his friends. Uh, there was one lady I told that to. I said, let's see how he, he would tell the story to his friends. I, I, I divorced my wife because she goes to church. Even other men would say you are a fool. So my <laughs> Not because she goes to club. Because she goes to church. That's why you left your wife. Man, who is the fool? And who will need prayers? He will. See, how long will you live in that fear? Man's fault was because he listened to a partner instead of God. And God cost what he did. And the partner was not there to help him. <laughs> how long? Do you understand? Listen, even if you are seeing someone, you, you are eager to have a partner, to date someone, ask the person, look, man, do you go to church? Fine. He says, man, I'm a free thinker. And probably you like him, but he doesn't really go to church. He says, look, man, I don't care what you do, but you can't stop me from going to church. And please sign. The day you stop me, it's true. And the reason why you're telling him to sign is because you like him. Do you understand? Let's not fake it. You c Listen, there are Christian women who like men who don't go to church. Let's not fool ourselves. Not every man in church is fine, truthfully. Do you understand? It's true now. Let See, now you're pretending now. Not every man who goes to church is really fine. You understand? Ah, exactly. Yeah, not every man. <laughs> Every man who goes to church. But women who go to church can be fine. Do you understand? Because they dress to be seen sometimes. Do you understand? Because there's no other occasion to wear that dress. So they say, uh, <laughs> But the guy may not care. Do you I say that respectfully. Respectfully. See? God says if you listen to me, you dwell safely. You dwell safely. And you will be safe from the fear of evil. Now, go to Job. See what Job did. Job chapter 3. When his children died and he lost everything. Look at verses 25. Someone God was bragging about in chapter 1. See what he said when the damage came into his life. He said, for the thing which I greatly feared. Somebody God was proud of wow. was living in fear. Wow. But how did that fear come to him? We'll tell you. For the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come upon me. Look at verse 26. Please read. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, yet trouble came. Trouble came. Yes. Yet yeah, he had God bragging about him. Yes, sir. He didn't trust that. Mm. Why? His wife. Because the very same wife was the one who told him, curse God and die. He was always giving God offerings. He said, maybe these my children, they party a lot. And because of their party, they can be so drunk, they can be cursing God. So he will be giving God offerings in fear. Yes. Some people send secret offerings because they don't want the husband or the partner to be angry. See what happened to the one who lived in that fear. His children all died. And the one he was afraid of was not telling him, cause God. <laughs> oh, man. What kind of life are you living? You look nice, you look good, yet you are full of fear. Because of someone who was supposed to be your comfort. See? It's not even new to God. It's not new, truly. It's not new. It has always been. But don't let that happen to you. Yes, sir. Don't let that happen to you. Yes, sir. Don't let that happen to you. How long will you keep living that way? Many of the mothers that I know who married such men, no vibrance. Particularly when they stop going to church. Just because they were. And the guy is 
on a Sunday, just at home, watching Sir. TV, drinking, sports, talking nonsense. The people he's talking about are successful. That's why they are on TV. Yes. He is even not. Mm -hmm. He is not on TV. There was one family. The man came. He said, because of you, my wife he is no longer listening to me. This and that. By the way, this and that. This and that. I, have every, I said, oh God, please, what do you really have? Tell me, how successful do you think you are? He said, what is that supposed to mean? I said, please, sir, tell me. Look at me very well. Can you smell my perfume? He said, I can smell it. I said, do you know how much I bought it? Because he was talking, talking. I was quiet. I was trying to say, oh, God. I said, oh, God, let me really talk to you. I said, the perfume I wear is over $700. The perfume I wear. The shoes I wear, do you know how much it costs? Did I come to ask you for money? How much does your wife give for church? How much do you think you have? Even as at that time, I was managing two private jets, but I didn't even tell him that. He was some assault. I said, how much do you really think you have? How much? What are you trying to protect? You don't even have nada. That means nothing. <laughs> how long will you keep living that way? <laughs> how long will you keep living that way? <laughs> now, nah, I hope I'm not disrespecting you. But, you know, the, the truth needs to be told. Yes, sir. Do you understand? I mean, go on. You know, some people say, God, God, make me like Esther. Read Esther's story. Mm. The husband she married, the king, was he serving Esther's God? Yeah. No, oh. but he respected her. Yeah. <laughs> Who saved her from her husband's anger? Her God, oh. the God she served that her yes, uncle sir. introduced her to. So if you go and read the story of Esther, they'll say, God, I received prophecy, my life is like that of Esther. You are joking. Go and sit down. Go and read. Esther did not serve her husband's God. And the man respected her for that. But anything she wanted, he gave her. Why? Do you know how Esther lived? She captured him spiritually in prayer. Yes, sir. Say this man, I will use fasting to capture your mind. You will yes. never refuse anything I ask. That's how Esther lived. So you say you want to be, a, be like Esther? That's how she lived. Go and read her story. She will first of all pray first and say, Lord, I capture his mind. Anything he wants to say, he will never say no to me. Then by the time she finishes, she will not dress nicely, wear perfume, and catwalk to go and see him. Yes, uh, that's how she lived. That's how, that's the Esther story. The Esther in the Bible. Not you looking scruffy and frustrated and say, God, make me like Esther. Lord, you know I'm suffering for you. You are not suffering for Jack. You like the suffering. Esther will pray first privately. She was not a prophetess, so she was just a regular lady who loved her uncle's God. Period. She will pray first. I, I don't get it. You know, even some people who are even dating, there was one lady, she's not even married to the guy yet. Yeah, she said, he doesn't want me to come to church. I said, who is he? Who does not want you to go to church? Who is the fool? Then three months later, she called me that she come and pray for him. I said, why? That guy will stop you from coming to church. She says, what happened? He had a hole in his heart. God put a hole there. You are crazy. You are trying to stop this one from going to church. Don't worry. It's simple. Your case is not hard. God just did like this. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. I, he can't, when I saw him, how are you, brother? How is he? I, I, you know, I can't scream. I said, you know my name? I've never seen you before. <laughs> he can't talk now. How are you, brother? I can't scream because if I do, if I do, I, I'll scream. I'll, I'll collapse, I mean. I say you will collapse. You know, they say they found a hole. And the Lord whispered to me, I just touched his... I said, so would you let her go, go to church? He said, she's free to go. I said, no, she's not. <laughs> but then guess one foolish thing in Hazard. But but when she goes, who will take care of me? You know, I can't really do anything. I say you still have can't you move? Go to the kitchen. Do Rama. Prepare what's that? Ram Ram Rama noodles. You know how to do it. 
<laughs> Look at this fool. The guy just wants to be a big baby. From mommy to, to, to junior mommy. From his own mother to another junior mommy. And the lady, the way she talks about her mother, my mother-in-law loves me. I said, she loves you because you are a maid. Listen, don't marry a man and be a maid. That's not why you married him. That's no Go and sit down. See, now you're upset. Uh, let's mind our business, since you like it. You might not want your... You know, maids are always afraid of their master. Why didn't you bring the sword early? Why is it not sword? I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Come on. That's somebody who was supposed to give you comfort as a partner. And you're afraid. Man. Don't live that life. He says, the things that I greatly fear. He was not just afraid. The fear became what? Great. great. Yes. No wonder. What killed his children? The fear the killed fear. all his children. Yes. Yes. Destroyed his business. Destroyed. And when he finally challenged God, God said, you challenge me. And God, when he began to speak, guess what he now said? He said, oh, my Lord, I've been hearing of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now my eyes see thee. Yes, what do you think that means? He finally, he finally gave attention. Yes, sir. After the destruction, after the damage, after the tragedy, he gave attention. Oh, I see now. But he had lost everything. Why do you have to be a victim before you learn? Why is it that the only thing you respond to is when somebody says, God said the Lord. When God was talking to Adam, did he say, God said the Lord? Or he said, don't eat, period. Don't eat. As long as there is no God said the Lord, I don't think it's God. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. What does God want from me? What does God want from me? Nah, your voice is low now. What does God What does God want from me? Can you give him what he wants? I believe you can. Well, I guess you're upset here. Your attention. And it's not hard. You can give him your attention on your bed. You can give him your attention even in your office. And God is not allowed to scream and disturb the person sitting next to you. He's a master communicator. Yes. He can talk to you as though you are the only person in the world. Yes. And the person sitting next to you will not hear him. Yes, sir. Because the message was for you. Yes, sir. All God needs is your attention. What do you think fasting does in our life? It helps us, it fine tunes our mind to just give focus. That's all. Focus. Even in, okay, why do you think people feel exhausted? Well, what's the most common reason why people feel like? Uh, they did not read the instructions. They didn't read it. I mean, we were talking about it a few days ago. You were telling me that some people, you, you, I mean, this student's academy we started. You were telling me that the reason why some people missed out on their financial financial aid was because they did not even read the instructions on the financial aid. They didn't. Which means they did not what? Give attention. They just wanted the money. Just give me the money. They didn't. They didn't. They got the money quite all right, but they never gave attention to the instructions that accompanies the money. And then the next school session now, they are expecting now the school to still give them money. The school say, what are you talking about? Why should I give you money? Mm. Attention. Attention. It's the path to victory. Yes, sir. It's the path to victory. If you're ever going to live a fearless life, really. Because if you say, I know God is with me, how do you know? Because he told me. But can you say that for yourself? I believe you can from today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He told me he would never leave me nor forsake me. Ah, I guess you're offended here. Yeah. He said he will never leave me, nor abandon me. And I heard him 
Because I gave him attention. Because I gave him attention. And then he now said, I will not be afraid what man will do to me. I will not be afraid. So man can still do something. He said, but I will not be afraid. Because he already told me he will never leave me, nor forsake me. So do your worst. Let God do his best. Yes, sir. I like that one. And his best is that he will never abandon me. See, when a man tells you he wants to divorce you, that's someone doing what? Forsaking you. Yes, leaving you. Let him do it. But God already said, I will not do what he did. Yes, sir. So let him do his worst while God does his best. Amen. It's the truth. It's the truth. Listen, God never said the first marriage will always be the best marriage. But the second one can be the best. Yes, sir. It's the truth. It would be nice if the first marriage is always the best marriage. It would be nice. Yes, sir. Because it takes two to make it work. It takes only one to destroy it. Yes, sir. Hey, what makes you think if you leave this one, another man will not like you? Why did you give up on yourself so soon? And did it destroy you that bad that another man will not be interested in you? Because if you're already in a relationship right now, or in a marriage, and it looks like if you leave the man, or the man leaves you, nobody will be interested in you, then that means he did a lot of damage to you. And you cost it. You allow him to do that to you. That another man will not be interested in you when he goes. And he brags on that. I will see which man will be interested in you. I've heard stupid remarks over the years. They said it to my face. Some said it to my face. The wife is sitting there. The man is sitting there. I will see who will be interested in you when I leave. There was one who even said to the wife, I just pity you. Who will be? Uh, who will be? I, I said, Mr. Yes. Man, you talk this way to your wife. They're still together. Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> Honestly, I really don't understand. <laughs> and I don't want to understand that kind of life. Why would you let someone who was supposed to be a partner, a comfort, make your life a rubbish to the point that you're even afraid? That nobody else will be interested in you. <laughs> Why would you let that happen to you? You allow fear to destroy you that bad. Let him go. Do you know how many people came for your wedding that day? Some of them, my wedding was 30 years ago. People still came. You don't know that among the guests who came, some of them are still hopeful. You don't understand. <laughs> Let's not fool ourselves. Just because some things are better left unsaid, some of them are still hopeful. In case it doesn't work, I'm here. <laughs> In case it, and we all come to weddings for different reasons. Some came for the food. Some came for friends. Some they had no choice. They had to come. See, man, we were, we were classmates. I have no choice. I have to go. Then there are others. See, eh? because on the wedding day you look your best. So you say, ah, I used to see you on the street. I didn't know you were this fine, no. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And that's why whenever there's a problem, they are always the first to call. I heard about what happened. <laughs> yeah, I heard. Are you, I hope you are okay. If you ever need anything, please call on me. Lean on me. <laughs> we are not strong. <laughs> Lean on me. They, you think they've left you? They, oh, wow. Even when you get back to the first child, they say, no problem. <laughs> Second child, no problem. They are still... <laughs> and that's also good news for the singles, too. Those who are not married yet. Don't ever think no one will be interested in you. There's always someone. They may not like your face, but they like your height. And they are okay with it. And they will give you the best of life. Ah, it's, be it's a beautiful face. Eh? I mean, with makeup today, you can look beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's the truth now. What, okay, what is makeup for? Is it not to look beautiful? Big, and you know, really, that makeup is a proof that you have some insecurities. Like, that there, are, there are dark spots here. But also, I need to put white, white, white foundation. It's okay. But he likes you that way. And in his mind, he already knows up behind the makeup, there is the real you. Yep. But he still knows from time to time you still put up the makeup. So, I mean, he's at peace with it. 
And if you say, there's this magic powder now from Dubai. Hey. Once you put the makeup, it stays. Yes. For two weeks before it washes. Hey. The guy will go and buy it. <laughs> Who sees it? You know, I saw one TikTok. Nigerians can devise anything. I saw one lady, she was saying, red lipstick, if you want it to stay, this is what you have to do. I mean, the thing she was doing, I was like, wow. Uh. Just to make a red lipstick stick. She said, and the thing will not clean. And she was doing it, the thing, I said, wow. <laughs> Even the manufacturers of that lipstick did not know uh. that their lipstick can stay. <laughs> Even longer. <laughs> Let's show you something. All God ever needs is your attention. Why don't you give it to him? Because remember, you need his attention every day. You, you need his attention every day. He is even asking you for your attention. He wants it every day, but he knows that your schedule will not allow you. I mean, it's not hard. Yes, sir. You can still be doing your job, and you're like, Lord, is there anything you need to tell me that I need to know? Is there anything I need to know? Please tell me. Is there anything I need to know? Let's see what the Lord said to the seven churches. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Let's see what the Lord said to the seven churches. Go to chapter 2. In fact, let, let, let's go to chapter 1 first. The book of Revelations. Revelations. We've left Job. Job was a funny guy. I'd like you to see something. You probably didn't know. This was all God wanted from me. God wants me to live a holy life. He just wants your attention. With your, with your attention, you know how to live that holy life. The Bible says his ways are not grievous. You think God doesn't know your weaknesses? What do you think grace is for? To help those in need. But who are those in need? Those with weaknesses. Paul says, I had a weakness in the flesh. And I besotted the Lord three times to help me let it go. And the Lord told him what? My grace is sufficient. For you, for in your weakness I will show my strength. God needs your weakness. So stop praying that your weaknesses should go because God needs it. If your weaknesses should go, it means you don't need grace. And God only shows his strength in your weaknesses. So say, I don't know how, how 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 they do it. They'll go to the club last night, drink, drink, take cocaine, and still come to church and be singing. How great thou art. That's why it is grace. The grace is what's sufficient for that weakness. If they acknowledge it's a weakness. It is not, see, listen, it is not right for somebody to say, this is your weakness. And I hear people say those things. To say, I know it is your weakness. You don't know what my weakness is. I only know what my weakness is. I'm the one to tell you what my weakness is, not you. You are not in me to know what my weaknesses are. So anyone who tries to tell you, I know this is your weakness, tell the person you don't know what my weakness is. You are not in me to know. Are you inside my body to know what my weaknesses are? You only presume that's my weakness. But now if I come to tell you now this is what my weakness is, now you know what it is. And guess what? Listen carefully. People's weaknesses, even if you know them, is an area you should never attack. Because that's where God shows his strength. Because if you are trying to attack that part, you are trying to challenge God. And that's where he will really attack. Never attack a man's weaknesses. Say, because I know his weaknesses, all our weaknesses, I'll go and tell everybody. You will be having a big problem because God said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, in your weaknesses, that's where I will show my strength. And so when somebody is trying to poke your weakness, if it's a wife poking your weakness, or a girlfriend, or a boyfriend, or a husband poking your weakness, you have a problem with God. An area you should never challenge in somebody's life, no matter who they are, is their weaknesses. Never touch that area because that's where God is resting. That's where God shows his strength. 
Say, I don't know why you keep smoking. I told you don't smoke. The guy said, I'm so sorry. I can't help you. I just like to smoke. Leave that area alone. Leave that area. Take your hands off that area. Because you don't know where God is standing. God says he likes your weakness. That's where he will show his strength. But what if your weakness is very ugly? God says, I like it. It's amazing the places God likes to be in. And God doesn't like to be in the best of places. That's why church is not for the best of men. Church is not for the best of men. The worst bunch come to church, like me. Honestly. <laughs> God is still working on me. I know you are clean. You know, I admire you people. Truthfully, I really admire many of you. People are very clean. Aye. But God is still helping my life. Oh. God is still helping my life. Okay, now. Look at verses 1. It says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants. You see that word servants? It's in plural. Follow that carefully. Yes, so, sir. how many servants? He didn't tell us. But they were supposed to be what? More than one. Yes, right? To show unto his servants. Things which must surely come to pass. Now, read the next slide. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. How many servants were supposed to be there to hear it? Many. But who showed up? John. One. How? Go to verses 9. You get to see something now. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and in the patience of Jesus Christ, was in the eye that is called Patmos. For what? For the word of God. What does that suggest? Attention. But others were still in church making noise. For the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. So what now happened? I was in the spirit. Verse 10, please be fast with me. I was in the spirit on the last day and heard behind me. Heard, heard. That means he gave attention to hear. He heard that that voice is not in front of him, it's behind him. Heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, Read, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto, the, unto Ephesus, unto the church in Smyrna, unto the church in Pergamos, unto the church in Titara, unto the church in Sardis, unto the church in Philadelphia, and unto the Lydian church. Now, see, he said what you see right. Has he seen anything yet? No. See what he now said. Read. And I turned to see. And what was the first thing he saw? An appearance. The angel told him, what you see, right. And when he turned, what did he see? He saw the angel. He saw how he looked. And he began to write it. Your hair is white. Your did. What do you think he was able, Why do you think he was able to capture that in details? Attention. All God needs in your life is your attention. And you have it to give. You've only been giving it to the wrong thing. If I tell you, you've been giving your attention to your bills. That's why it looks amplified. Just come on, all these bills. Won't be piling up, piling up, piling up. And guess what? Anything you give attention to amplifies. It amplifies. Attention. Attention. Yes, sir. Is what differentiates the excellencies of men. The excellencies of men. Okay, gun laws, gun reforms today that they are not passing. Yet with so many killings. Don't they see it? They are seeing it. But why have they not passed legislations to curb it? They are not giving attention to the people who voted them in. They are not giving attention to the people who voted them in. And yet you still vote for someone who is not giving attention to you. How often do they visit your constituency to come and hold town hall meetings to talk to you? See. Why are you not giving... If you are going to ever be excellent in your life, in, 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 in an unparalleled magnitude of victory, begin to develop 
the habit of giving attention. Yes, For those who are students, start with your classes. Yes, Say, I may not like the way the professor talks, but let me give attention. He, because I believe that he's saying something that makes sense. How can you leave a class and say, I don't know what he said? He was just talking, 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 talking. Did you give attention? Because you that was not listening, someone was still nodding to what the professor was saying. That means they were giving attention. Say, they gave me a C. That will tell you what? Your level of attention. You are at C level. <laughs> B plus. That's your level of attention. And those of you who are nurses, you know even your job requires attention. Oh, yes. Yeah? Yes, even reports, medications, and all those things. Important. Right? Yes, it requires attention. Yes. So when they pay you uh, at the end of the month, what do you think they are paying you for? They are rewarding your what? How much you give attention. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So work experience is what? How much attention you gave all through the years to get to where you are now to now desire this new position. Yes, sir. Let's begin to develop this thing. Yes, sir. Attention. 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 Don't just go to a store and just buy any dress you want to wear. Don't just go. Don't just okay. Designers, do you know the difference between designers and payless? Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know the, the school, the, the shoes you buy at Payless, or the one you buy at Walmart. You know the way they, they still make the ones. They want. <laughs> There's just always something wrong with those shoes at Walmart. They still, they may, it may still, it it does look good, but I just still know ah. <laughs> as long as you made it to Walmart, you are not good enough, man. <laughs> it's just the truth. Ah, I'm not angry with you. You know, have you ever seen, there was one time during one winter, I needed a boot. So I said, ah, okay, uh, one of the stores that I would have loved to go to is closed. I said, okay, let me just see what Walmart has. Walmart, <laughs> Walmart has all kinds of boots. Now, nah, don't pretend you don't go to Walmart. You, you see those boots. You understand? Rigid boots. And there was one I saw. I said, ah, this must be Timbaland. I said, does Walmart carry Timbaland? <laughs> it didn't look like Timbaland to me. I was so happy. Oh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah. Yeah. So why were you laughing? Yeah, uh, I thought you were laughing at my accent. Timbaland. Timbaland. Yeah? Timbaland. Timbaland. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I came close, I said, ah. Yeah. Yeah. But they put a design. Yeah. Wow. You understand? I said, ah, hey. Walmart. <laughs> Why would you do this to me? <laughs> but even though I needed that boot, believe me. And I was, I, you know, I ran out from my car into Walmart with my slippers. I still ran back with the slippers. I said, no. Ah, uh, what's the point buying the money? Well, and then I'll still give the boots away. Yeah. I mean, you want to have something for good keeps. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. What do you think I did? I, I was considering. Mm -hmm. Who will be looking at that boots and say, well, that's not in balance. <laughs> 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 because if I buy it and I wear it, someone say, ah, uh, uh, Rosie, where did you get this boots from? <laughs> I say, ah, it's in balance. <laughs> in, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in balance. <laughs> But how come those shoes made it to places like that and did not make it to the designer stores? Attention. attention. Whoever made them did not give the detailed attention required as to the original yes. shoes. So the designers you are buying, do you know what you are paying for? You are paying attention. for detailed attention. Yes, that someone took time. When, they, when you hear them say, this thing is handcraft. Yes. I mean, even car wash. There are some car wash. You just drive in, the machine just does. Then there are some car washes, they'll tell you, hand wash. Yes. And truly, if you see hand wash, it's really hand wash. You know, they did something here. And you can't, you can't just pay extra for that. Just say, no. 
They told you DT forty nine dollars. Then they saw you saw twelve dollars, seven dollars, twenty five dollars. So say, I'm in a hurry, I'm in a hurry. Just give me, give me the seventeen dollars because you look too, 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 too in the car to go for seven dollars. Even that seventeen dollars you paid, it pinned, it pinned you, it pinned. <laughs> So why would I why would I waste money for forty nine dollars? And then when the car now said I must have accident today, oh. another car must jam me. No. You don't even beat me well. You don't treat me well. You don't know things talk. Yeah. The one car hit you. So oh God, <laughs> this is my precious car. The car said I'm not precious. Leave me alone. <laughs> I want to rest. <laughs> I mean, your car saw a car call me headlong. He said, please jam me. <laughs> please jam me. My owner does not take care of me well. Learn to begin to give details. Yes, Some of you, even the clothes you wear, say, nobody's looking at me. I came to save my God. <laughs> Who said we are not looking at you? You think we are all blind? When you were climbing the stairs, somebody was looking at you. When you walked in, Osha looked at you. So, please, we have a place to put you. And some of you don't comb your hair. Say, mm, just, mm. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> okay, now I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Go to chapter two. Let's see something that the Lord said to the first church. All right? To the first church, look at verse 7. To the church in Ephesus, read the first statement. Read the first sentence. One, two, go. He that hath the ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. You sound offended. Read it again. One, two, go. He that hath the ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, go to verse 11. What does it say? Go to verse 17. Want to go? Go to verse 29. What does it say? Go to chapter 3 and read verse 6. Want to go? Go to verse 13. Please read loud. Want to go? Go to verse 22. What does it say? So, how many times did he say that? Seven times. To the seven churches. That's all God needs for me. He repeated it seven times. That's all God wants. He keeps saying, he that hath an ear. He that hath an ear. Just one he. That he also includes she. He or she that has an ear. Let him hear. Now, how many churches? He didn't count. He said, churches. Because if I can just have one person who will just give me an attention. Because there's too much activity in church. It's true. So many things carry people's attention. Okay, now let's finally give you one scripture, then we'll close. Yes, then you'll now see how clearly God could be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's read from verses 20. Proverbs chapter 4. Have you been blessed so far? Yes, sir. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to pay attention. attention. Yeah. Give my attention yes, to God. Now, look at what does he say? My, my son. son. Attention. It also means my daughter too. Yes, sir. Okay, read now. One, two, go. My son, attend to my word. You see that? Give attention. 
Give attention. Give attention. To what? Please answer now. Give attention. And do what? Incline unto my sins. Do you know what it means to incline? Incline means, I know you are busy, but in your busy schedule, step, at, step aside to give attention. Yes, sir. So, at first, he said, give attention. He said, okay, no problem. I know you are busy. But even in your busy schedule, please, still step aside. Now, you know you can do that during your break at work. You can do that during your break time in school. So, here, even God understands that you can be busy. Yes, sir. But he says in the midst of it, still step aside. That's what it means by incline. Yes, sir. Step aside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he didn't tell you how long. You can do 10 minutes. Yes, sir. You can do 5 minutes. Depending on how much you are needed at work. Yes, sir. And then go back again. God said I'm fine with that. Can you begin to do that day? Yes, we have a lot of messages on YouTube. Yes, I'm not telling you to listen to the whole message, the whole two-hour message in one sitting. Some of us do that yes. and play it again. Yes, but at least you can pick one message and say, okay, fine. I'm going to be giving 10 minutes to, to that message. I know I'm busy at work. Or if you work remote, you can be playing it at the background. You know, Pastor Vivo did tell me our experience in one of our jobs. She said, there was one time the job was so difficult that it was very challenging for her. And sometimes like her mind would just clock because so many things are calling for her attention. Her yeah. boss is saying this, the other boss is saying the opposite, yeah. and she needed to cater to both of them. Yeah. I said, so I, she said, but sir, what, what do I do? I said, start playing messages at the background. Mm, yes, sir. Ideas will come. Yes, sir. It's one of the things about messages. Yeah. I, I said, I mean, and we have varieties of messages. Pick the ones you love, you, you like. And she said, she started doing that. She will be playing the messages at the background and while walking. She said, for some reason, her mind, the clog in her mind just cleared. Amen. She always knows exactly what to do. Amen. Always what to do. But why? You know why? When you are playing those messages, your soul listens to it. You can use your mind to attend to your job, but your soul is capturing it. Because the word of God is for your soul. And your soul has three faculties. Your will, your mind, your emotions. You are using your will to play the message and your will to do the job. Right? But you are using your mind for the job while your emotions are captured by the message. So if you have the right emotions, your mind will be clear to do the job with your mind. That's how it works. I said, be playing the messages at the background. Even if you are studying in school too. You can turn down the volume, but you just be playing it. You will hear something. I mean, because even the messages, even me that God used to preach, I listen to the messages. There is always an atmosphere that message will create. Sometimes it can just say something that can make you just laugh. You're like, ah, that's true. What did he say again? You find yourself increasing the volume. Let me hear this part. Then you... It clears your, yes, your yes. mind. He says, step aside. Step aside. My son, give attention. My daughter, give attention to my word. Not to your husband. Not to your girlfriend. Not to your wife. Because your husband may not have a word for you. It's, true. it's the truth. Yes, sir. Your wife may not have a word for you. But God does have a word for you. Amen. So I want to hear God. It's because your mind is too busy. That's why you don't hear him. He's always talking. Notice he uses the word sayings. Sayings. Continuous tense. Sayings. Highlight it. Sayings. As he's still talking. So I want to hear God. He's been talking. You just did not give attention. Because you, and one of the things, one of the biggest mistakes you make is how you create in your mind the way God will talk to you. You have, you have unconsciously created in your mind how you want God to talk to you. Who told you that's, that's how he wants to talk to you? Who told you he likes to talk to you that way? And please, please, let me tell you something that you need to go home with. Stop waiting to dream. Say, God talks to me through dream. Stop it. Yes, sir. 
The only reason why God talks to you in the dream is because you've not been paying attention while awake. Yes, sir. If you read Job 33 verses 14 to 18, Job 33 verses 14 to 18, you can read that for yourself. You get to see. He said, God calls once, you did not pay attention, so he calls again. And you did not pay attention, so he comes to you in your sleep. So dream. The reason why God talks to people through dream is because the people were not giving attention while awake. Yes. God does not like to talk to you when you are asleep. He doesn't like it. Stop it. Yes. The people he did that to were the people in the Old Testament. Yes. They say, ah, you know, I'm a dreamer. What are you bragging about? You are a dummy. No, and I say that respectfully. And you, brag, and you say, you know, when I dream, all my dream come to pass. It, the very fact that you acknowledge you are a dreamer means you are someone who does not give attention. While awake. Which one would you prefer? He says, he, have he, he says, he says, while men slept, the enemy came to sow tears. So you are dreaming the enemy is planning. Hey. Is it not good to be awake while God is talking to you? Yes. Dreams are secondary means through which God talks to people. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yes, sir. Don't wait for the secondary. Go for the primary. Yes, sir. He says, give attention to my sins. Yes, sir. What did he not say in verses 21? Let them not depart from your eyes. What does that mean? Focus. If you give attention, you will maintain a word. Focus. And then what? Keep them in the midst of your mind. He said it will dominate your mind. Why is he telling you all of this? Read. For they are life. Life to those who find them. You see that? God says my words. For you to find it, you need to give attention. Yes. You can't be doing two things. And you're saying, Lord, I'm listening. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Go on, go on. No. He already told you. He said because his word is something you need to find. Mm -hmm. And the only way to find it is not by prayer. He says, attention. attention. <laughs> Look at you. I told you how I used to go and spend days to fast and pray. Seven days. Lock up in the hotel. I will just go in. The only time I come out is when I'll call Pastor Ines to come and pick me. That would be like the seventh day. I'll just be there fasting, praying. The Lord will be talking to me. Until one day he came. He said, this is the last time. I'll do that. I said, why? He said, everything about your life I've already told you. What do you want to know again? Go. <laughs> he told me everything about my life. Everything. Everything. Tom said, if you told you everything, that thing that you said happened recently, why did it have to happen? I told you, they said value. Do the people value you? Yes, That's just all. I, did, I wasn't even thinking of that. Sir. For me, I don't even care. But he said, no, these people, do they really value you? Mm, yeah, I know you do. You know you've been with me from the very beginning. Yeah. So, here's the point. He says, they are life to those who find them. And medicine. That word medicine is the Hebrew word mape, medicine, medicine for your health. So if you are sick, it is because you don't give attention. Isn't that amazing? Even the medications the doctor will give you, he will tell you, take two tablets in the morning, in the afternoon. And even that, even when they wrote it, they, they not even devise a can, two, two tablets every day. Yes, sir. You scatter everything. <laughs> so which one again? Which, what did the doctor say? The doctor said two pieces in the morning, one in the afternoon, two in the evening. So, I think it's two, two, two. <laughs> Your mind say, well, look, I just want to get well. Uh, let's close. Yes, sir. You must win. Yeah. Yes, sir. He says you will dwell safely. Yes, sir. Dwell safely, yes, sir. You will dwell safely. Yes, Remember what I told you recently. Stop waiting for the messages those ministers are preaching on the TV. The coming of the Lord. Yes, we can't wait for the Lord to come. Yes, sir. The Lord is not going to come. He has already come. Yes, sir. The Spirit of God is the Lord. He dwells in us. He says if the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, 
The Lord has already come. He's in us. Yes, sir. So say, we've been waiting for the Lord. We can't wait for the rapture to take place. The Lord has already come. Yes, sir. Amen. So say, ah, are you sure about that? The only church Paul said that to was the church in Thessalonica. He didn't tell the church of Ephesus about the rapture. He didn't need to tell them that. Because the Lord has already come. Yes, sir. He says, I will never leave you. No forsake me, sir. No forsake you. Yes, sir. Is he far away then? No. What is Emmanuel? God with us. With us. With, well, maybe not with you. But with us. Ah. He's already here. Ah. He's here. So I can't wait to see my Lord. The heavens will open. Read what he even said to these seven churches, yes, right? Yes, he did not even mention anything about rapture in terms of coming to take the Christians away. Read it. If you read it in context, you will know he didn't say anything about the rapture. There was a reason why he said that to the church in Thessalonica, because there was a tragedy that happened in that church, so he will, and they were very sorrowful. Their conscience was weakened, so he began to encourage them. But he didn't say that to other churches. Take your safety. And those people now started saying, we wake up with rapture, 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 rapture. Okay, have you not been hearing it since? Yes, have you not been hearing it since? Yes. Why? Because the Lord, in fact, he even said I will come as a thief in the night, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How does a thief come? Quietly. quietly. No, a thief does not come quietly, actually. No, that's not how a thief comes. Otherwise, Jesus was wrong when he defined a thief. What did he say about a thief? He committed to what? Steal. Come on now, he coming to what? Steal, kill, and to destroy. Is that not happening already? Yes, sir. I guess you're I, I think I'm coming. Right? He said the thief coming up but for to what? Steal, kill, and to destroy. Is that not happening already? Yes, sir. Well, I, I guess you feel disappointed. No, sir. That, ah, brother, what are you saying? <laughs> Is the Lord not going to come? You see, that's, that's where you miss it. You are still waiting for him to come when he's already with you. Yes, sir. He said, I will never leave you. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I wish you can believe that. Yes, he said, I will never leave you. Yes, when I was coming to America, he told me that. When I came to America, I didn't know anybody. 11 years ago, I, didn't know, I slept at JFK for two days. I didn't know anybody. But he told me, don't worry, you'll be fine. I brought you here. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I told you, I almost ended up in a shelter once. The first three months I came to America, I was on the queue. <laughs> because the pastor I was living with kicked me, kicked me out in the cold. He said I was trying to take over his church because he made me Sunday school teacher. Each time I'm teaching Sunday school, the members will gather. After Sunday school, they will start leaving. <laughs> so he said, he said I was taking over his church, so he kicked me out. Yeah. He made me Sunday school teacher. Mm. <laughs> I told you, I used to go on. One Spanish guy that had a store. After the pastor kicked me out, I used to. <laughs> this, this, yeah, soccer. The Spanish guy said, You're from Nigeria? You play soccer? Yeah. Then he would throw the ball. I'll be jogging the ball because I used to play soccer. By the time I jog, he would give me $1.45. Then I'll run to Golden Cross, unfolding by Nostra, mm. to eat the, the small park. Of rice and beans because there was a bonanza for like six months. Yes. And God, God created that provision. Amen. The moment the day it ended was the day I got an accommodation. Amen. And I used to go to the mosque next to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, there was a mosque. There, there's still a mosque there. I used to go there to take my bath to go to church. The pastor kicked me out, I was still attending his church. Wow. And I'll go to the mosque, take my bath. So that was eleven years ago. 
<laughs> Even his wife was cursing me. The wife, she just nearly gave birth to a baby when I came. I would wash the baby's diapers, sweep the house. I eat once in a day. She would say, you are wasting food. You eat and remain. You eat, come and eat seafood. I cook plenty of food. That was her quarry that I don't eat. I said, I can't eat. I'm in your house, so I need to package my life. And when I was living, she was cursing me. You will suffer in America. In a, in my, and the Lord said, don't pay attention. Just, I said, I'm sorry, ma. I'm sorry, ma. God punish you. What you did to, you want to take my husband's child? I said, I didn't take my. Then the Lord said, knee down. I will knee down. I said, I'm sorry, ma. I'm sorry, ma. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> this is the best time to be alive. <laughs> but I was paying attention. The Lord said, keep quiet. Don't say anything. When she's talking, the Lord said, don't look at her face. Just put your head on the ground. I'm sorry, ma. She will be cursing me, cursing me, cursing me. In Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> I said, ma, you know, my husband made me Sunday school teacher. Oh. <laughs> there was a member of the church who furnished his church, paid for everything. That's the guy I told you guys has an eight million dollar home in Connecticut. Yes, sir. That guy, he saw the way the pastor was treating me. He now come, called me and gave me a house. Wow. Say, I like you, Pastor. See, you're a very, you're a very humble person. You see, I saw the way Pastor talks to you and you don't talk back. I see the way you put your hand by your, at your back when, you're, when the pastor is talking to you. Say, Pastor, I will help you. He came, furnished the apartment. You know? <laughs> ah, he said, Pastor, you'll be very rich in this America. But don't be like me. <laughs> yeah, I told you he bought the property he wanted to show off. He said, Pastor, don't be like me. Buy what you like. Don't try to show off. <laughs> Oh, man, the fire of God envelopes our lives. You see, this week is a week of fire. And that fire, it, it saturates you. It covers you. So even the enemy cannot encroach. You see that? The enemy cannot come near you. The enemy cannot touch your children. Even when you forget to pray, the fire of God will envelop you. Amen. Just like the way the angel said, the Holy Spirit will what? Overshadow you. But fire also means trials too. The Greek word is pour. P-U-R. Pour. So even though this week is a week of fire, there will be trials. Make no mistakes about it. He said, but you will not be harmed. People want to say things that are not true about you. But don't worry, you are fine. He already said, I will never leave you. Well, maybe, maybe you don't believe it. Nobody wants to be around me. Stop it. He said, I will never leave you. Everybody walks away from me. Good people around me always leave me. No, he said, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. That's why I'm not alone. Say, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm not disadvantaged. I'm not disadvantaged. I'm not disadvantaged. I'm marvelously helped. The fire of God saturates my life. I will never be harmed. My children will never be harmed. Our church will never be harmed. No weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. No weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. Fashioned against me shall prosper. Look at you. Listen. You are looking at me. I'm creating my path. You say something for yourself. <laughs> no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. I will never be defeated. I will never be defeated. I will never be conquered. I will never be disadvantaged. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Man salakari adushkes. Veli akure take a force. Listen, listen. I mean, if just a few days ago, that was last Sunday actually. I was amazed what I saw when I saw on TV what happened in Libya. 
flood yes, sir. from the ocean, yes, sir. swept away 11,000 people and killed them. Yes, sir. Flood just at what? Yes, ah, I can never be harmed. Yes, Those people were not expecting to die that day. Yes, you know what it means? Where you don't even know where it's up and down because flood is coming. Killed those people. Wiped out an entire village. Finished them. And the leaders are still not listening. They are still not listening. They are still not listening. Those leaders are not listening. The reason why these things is happening around the world, this disaster, is because of those in leadership. We have a good president. This president, Joe Biden, is a very good president, truthfully. But other countries of the world, their leaders are destroying this, their countries. Yeah. I'd like you to pray. Yes, sir. Clear your path. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm a success forevermore. Yeah, I'd like you to pray. I'm a success forevermore. Pray for yourself now. Pray for yourself. I must dwell safely. I must dwell safely because I give attention. I give attention. I give attention. I must dwell safely. My children must dwell safely. My job is safe. My business is safe. My employees are safe. Our church is safe. I flourish on every side. I flourish on every side. I flourish on every side. And I'm prosperous on every side. Balia kuse kretos. Sengros kuvre telia kura dekete. No weapon. Fashion against me shall prosper. Lesa kapa talia kuse kretos. Grendos kuvre tekese kretos. Salia cure kete maso prates. Immortal, invisible God. Sing to him now. Revolver, your mind. Are you sure he's your king? Invisible 